We are live. So welcome everybody to this week with Work It Wednesday. Today we have another EXP agent, an international speaker, a coach. Um, she's run her own team successfully and her name's Charity Masaudi. She's going to be here to talk to us about refining our systems and processes for real estate, which I'm really excited about. And you know, it's so funny, Charity, is um, it's the one thing I talk about all the time. Like I came from teaching. So for me, the teaching, the talking, the learning part of it came very natural, right? I really enjoyed that aspect of it. And I like being my own boss, but it's so hard being your own boss. And really the only systems I ever had to work with were systems to put in place for third graders. Right. So in your business, it's like you don't have an audience that will let you know, and you can definitely see if it's working or not. You just kind of have it on your own and either you're not tracking things well, it's costing you a lot of time and energy. And that is my biggest struggle still. So I've been in the business since 2018. And um, so I'm really happy to have you on. I was talking to Charity the other day and she said, I don't know why this happens in my brain, but like when she starts to think of an idea, it comes out fully formed. So it's like it, she just sees it differently. So I'm really happy to have you on and um, we'll go ahead and let you begin. So um, I'll let you take it from here and let me do your speaker view. I'll make you the co-host. Okay. All right. All right, there you go. Okay, perfect. Yes, so I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for, re for reaching out. And um, I don't see myself. Let me see speaker view. Hmm. Where'd you hide? I think she's probably trying to figure out the view. It's a good picture. Oh, she's texting something to me. There's been a technical difficulty. Okay, no, no worries. She said she pushed the wrong button. So I need to let her back in. Let me just go ahead. As soon as you log in. All right. Give me just a second, guys. Ain't this the truth? All right. I'm admitting her. I got more people to let in. All right. We should be good to go now. Sorry, Charity. I don't know what happened. I pushed the wrong button, but that's there okay. Um, so we'll come up with a process for that, right? So anyways... <laughs> So when Jennifer reached out to me and I was like, oh yeah, I mean, first of all, to your point, like I never thought that this was a thing that I was good at. It just kind of came to me and I, I didn't recognize it was like, this is not normal. Like me being able to do this was not normal for most people. And I think that that's a big point to take into consideration that I find when we're struggling with things that we don't we don't always like give ourselves credit for the things that we're good at, right? And and we only kind of put ourselves down for the things that we feel like we're not good at, right? And so I just, I always preface like any of these trainings, like this may not be your strength, but it's good to know about it. And it's like, at least know how to support yourself. If this is not your strength, like focus heavily on your strength and then find ways to support yourself and, you know, doing other things. So again, so systems and processes, a lot of people don't know what systems and processes are. Um, I'm going to get a, from the audience, you guys write in the chat, kind of what is your idea of what is a system and a process? I just want to hear from you guys what your thought on this is. And if you feel like you have like a really good system or process, any of them, let, let me know which things that you feel like is, is something you're really good at.
Okay. So something I don't have to think about systems support the processes, process are the steps to accomplish the goal, all the tools we have available to us, something that can be duplicated, having a plan and following it. Right. <clears throat> and I always joke around and say that like, to me, like I'm lazy at the end of the day, <laughs> this is just because I'm lazy. If I got to do something twice, I'm making a video. I'm going to make a process. I'm going to make a checklist and somebody else is going to do it. Right. I want it to be the point of, I don't have to do it anymore. Right. But I want it to be done the way I want it to be done. Most of us who are entrepreneurs, right. We have this um, need to be in control. Um, that's why we're entrepreneurs and we want to do a good job for our clients. Right. But that doesn't mean you have to be the one to do it. So systems and processes is the key to scaling and growing because once you know how you do the things that you do and are able to articulate it, which is the second piece, which is the hardest, then you're able to um, give that to someone else. And that frees you up to grow and do what you want to do and live in your genius. Okay. So I don't know if you guys ever heard of the working genius test. I would highly recommend everyone to take the working genius test. There's basically six types of working geniuses and you have two that you're a genius at naturally. There's two that you're okay at and two that you just does not bring you joy. You're probably good at it because you're overachievers, but you're not, you don't love doing it. Right. And so a lot of people who are on these trainings because they don't feel like they love systems and processes. The other piece I find is that people really um, avoid systems and processes. They feel like, oh, this is going to be so tedious. Uh, so I, I'm so sick of it. The cool thing about systems and processes is once they're made, they're done. You don't have to keep on reinventing the wheel all the time. If you want to tweak things, you can go back and tweak and then you can bring people in. So systems and processes. I want you to think of systems like the systems of a house. What are the major systems of a house? And some of you guys who are newer may not understand what I'm saying, but like the HVAC is a system of the house, right? It's something that supports the function of the whole thing. It's, it's an all encompassing system where the function is to heat and cool the house. Does that make sense? What a system of the house looks like? Okay. You have the um, water heater, you have the roof is a system, the, electric, the electrical, the plumbing, that's all systems. So a system is a collection of things that do something, right? Your business is a system and there's systems within systems. <laughs> Okay, again, for me, this sounds so fun. I love this. I'm such a dork about this. But most people are like, oh, God, you mean there's not one system I have to learn? There's 100 systems? Ugh, kill me now, right? Okay, so systems and then the processes are the parts that make up the system, right? So think of you're building a Lego house, all of the individual Legos, right? And even within those Legos, there's smaller Legos, Right, they're all pieces. So I tell people I think in Excel sheets. I really do. <laughs> Everything is a square block. But to me, and, and then let me explain to you guys, this is a defense mechanism for me. I am a highly emotional person. Systems and processes take emotion out of things. Tracking things take emotion out of things. It's not how I feel about something because that could change day to day. It's objective fact. And this is how you build your business. One plus one equals two. Your business becomes a mathematical equation that you can predict, which takes out all of the stress. I want you to think about for like your kids have soccer on Thursdays at 6 p.m. Do you think about your kids having soccer on Thursdays at 6 p.m. or do you just naturally go? That's a system and a process, right? Okay, so when you just know that when something comes in, the term in corporate is the ball keeps bouncing. So something comes into a process and it automatically happens. And you don't have to worry about it and you don't have to think about it. And it's seamless and it's perfect every time or as close to perfect as life could get. So for those of us who are overachievers, perfectionists, anybody overachiever, perfectionist, do you get like stressed? Like when things are not going perfectly, I don't understand. So most of the time you're playing catch up. Most of the time you're a 1099, be bopping around showing houses. This makes you a business owner. 
This makes you push your business forward and tell your business what to do and tell money what to do and tell time what to do instead of waiting for it to happen. This also helps build your confidence. So a lot of the systems and processes you have to lay out. And once you've done that layout, you know, like beyond a shadow of a doubt, this is how this works. And then you're able to explain it to other people, which isn't that job as our job as real estate agents and business owners. Our job is literally just to explain things to people. Teacher, right? So Jennifer, that's why teachers make great business owners, because that's what we do. We don't really sell people. I mean, kind of, there's some sales techniques, but those people are going to buy or sell without you. You're not going to convince them to buy or sell. That's not your job. Your job is to explain why you're the best person because you got your life together. And people know that when you walk in and you say, boom, 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 boom. This is how it works. They're like, take my money. (laughs) Please let me hire you. Right. And that gives you the confidence. And as a new agent, a lot of people are like, well, I don't know how to, well, what's the one thing that you can control? How much, you know, right. That's the one thing you can work on that no one can ever take away from you is your ability to learn. And then systems and processes take this dreaming fantasy. I want to make this happen and turn it into production. It's how you take an idea and make it real. A lot of us have like good ideas, but then we don't actually do it. Right. And, and then if you're like, Oh, I forgot this. I forgot this. I'm going to tell you one thing I always used to forget before I had this down, I would forget to tell people to transfer the utilities. Every time. If you notice something wrong is happening more than once, it means you need a system, Mm -hmm. right? Now, there are things in our processes that will be different based on different transactions. But for the most part, and I don't care where you are, is everybody here in North Carolina or do people have from different states? I think we got those from different states. Oh, I see Michigan for Carrie, right? Griselda, North Carolina. A lot of you guys I know or North Carolina. Um, so if you aren't aware, if you haven't learned yet, different, different states are very different. Like their laws are very different. The pros and cons are very different. The contract is different. Where people can lose money is very different. Like people don't have due diligence. <laughs> like that's nothing in North Carolina. That's not in other states, right? But it doesn't matter what the thing is. At the end of the day, we kind of go through the same things right? And let's just talk about the buyers. And I'm going to get into some other stuff, but I just want to walk through a system or a process with you. And everything that I have has process underneath it, right? So you have at the beginning of every transaction, you're going to have your marketing, which includes branding. And there are certain things that you do once. And there are certain things that you keep on doing, right? And that can change over time. Then you have your lead generation, which is actually different than marketing. It's related to each other, but it's different. Mm -hmm. Then you have lead conversion. Just because you have leads doesn't mean you're good at getting them to talk to you. And even if you get them to talk to you, can you get an appointment? And even if you have an appointment, can you get them to sign a buyer's agency, which is going to be super duper important for every single person, right? Then once the buyer's agency happens, what's the next steps from there? And that process may look different for you, but I'm telling you myself, I never, ever, ever, ever send somebody to a lender till I've had a buyer's presentation. And this is super different for most people. Number one, you guys are so busy. You can't do a buyer's presentation. I don't think so. The buyer's presentation prevents all of the problems you're having. If you're having problems with buyers, you're not doing a buyer's presentation, not a proper one. I always tell people I'd rather scare the living crap out of them for an hour. (laughs) And then if we're moving forward, we're in this together, right? Like I want you to know all the pitfalls because by showing you that I'm showing you how I'm helping you. Right. And they're not going to have this conversation with somebody else. If we've gotten that deep together. Right. And then, then the process of once you have buyer's agency and they're pre-approved, what's the process of showing houses? Is it the same every time? Or do you just respond to them? 
Are you telling them how it works or are they telling you how it works? This is a difference in all your processes. And these also create what are called standards. This is my standard of how I work. And I'm not allowing someone to push me around and get out of my standards, right? Not all money is good money. That's the cool thing about entrepreneurship. You get to choose your clients. But because you have good systems, you have leads coming in all the time, you get to be picky, right? So if any of these systems are not working or functioning properly, you're going to have a mess on your hand, right? When you're showing houses, are there certain things that you look at every time? Do you go in a certain order every time? Do you make sure you say this thing? And here's the thing. Everybody is so against scripts. You have scripts. We all have scripts. We all say the same things very similarly all the time. And understand a script doesn't have to be a word for word, but it's an outline, right? And that's the beauty of the freedom within a process. The process makes sure you don't forget things. Then you can have flexibility and freedom within the process. But you're not going to miss the important things. You're not going to just wing it, which is what, unfortunately, most real estate agents do. They're just out here winging in, which is why you have a business that looks like this. Right. This is the key to consistency. Just keep it even. And especially if you're an overachiever, you'll probably go like this, be a shooting star for a minute, and then you're going to drop back down and weeks and weeks and nothing is happening. And then you're a superstar and then nothing is happening. Right. So that's what's going to happen to your money. I'd much rather you keep it even keel and do the same thing consistently, even if it's less things you're still going to have better results over time, right? So then when you're writing an offer, what is your process for that? Do you pull comps? Do you pull disclosures? How do you have those conversations? Do you, do you have them sign a, some kind of personal agreement that we've talked about this? Do you send a recap email? Like These are things that keep you out of a real estate jail. The hard part when you're new is you don't know these things are like exist. But then if you don't get that initially, then trying to add it in later becomes really hard, right? Once you're going, trying to add systems after the fact. So I try to always get people to do their systems and understand those systems early, okay? And then once you're under contract, what's your system? Here's an example. One of my girls yesterday, she got her listing under contract. This is our, her second listing. So when she was calling the buyer's agent, of course, that's the fun call, right? It was April Fool's too, so she was like, Oh, unfortunately, we went with someone else. Just kidding, April Fools. You went like so. It was like this is the fun call, right? But I said, well, how are they doing due diligence? Your seller's on a ship, like so. You have to ask those questions as a listing agent. So otherwise, now you got to call her back. The point of systems is you do less work because you know what needs to be done and you do it all at the same time and or give it to somebody else. Again, systems are the key to laziness or freedom, which is probably a better way to say that. <laughs> this is what systems are for, right? Once you're under contract, what's the process for, you know, getting um, inspections, appraisals, who's your people that you work with? So part of your systems and processes is who's your team, whether that's a team team who handles things with you and, or just your vendors that are around you or both. That's part of your process, which is why it's really important to have good people that you can count on. Does that make sense? Okay. I and just then wanted to say something. I'm sorry to interrupt, but it yeah. made me think I was watching you and David Finale talking and I like how, because you guys have the same philosophy about time that I do. Um, you can't so much manage time, but you can direct your time. Okay. That was your big thing. You direct your time, like you direct your money. And it's funny because um, when you said processes lead to standards, I was thinking part of what I do with my time is I do what's called activity blocking. So those activities never go away. I can just have more flexibility if I have something come up, but I spend some of those times to develop processes. Yeah. So part of like what I do is every day I spend a designated amount of time towards processes such as creating Gmail templates that get sent out when you're under contract. So you know, you have the first one and then the next one about inspections and the next one about attorney paperwork. But um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to chime in there because it it struck me like it's very interesting 
that you even need a process for yeah, process processes. Processing. Yes. <laughs> and this is at the very end today. Like the main thing that I'm going to talk about, because to me, at the, at the end of everything is time management. And it's such a hokey word and like, oh, time management, blah, right? We hate the word time management. But what does that actually mean? It's budgeting time. How do you manage time? Um, and that, that word means like I tell time where to go. I just need a clear list of things I need to do. And how much of that do I need to do? And I'm going to put it on my calendar and I'm going to do it. Like, I know it sounds really simple, but the first step, many people don't even use their calendar. But you're never going to be successful if you don't use a calendar. I don't care who you are. I don't care. There's no one person in the entire world who doesn't live off a calendar. You rebel against it if you want to. Now, Jennifer might have a daily working on her systems. I might, because of the way my brain works, I might have a weekly or a monthly or both. But I just put it on my calendar. Do you know, this is the one thing that we do, and I'm just going to say, especially as, as, as women, Miguel, I know you're here. God bless you. I love you. But for women in particular and people pleasers, which makes us really good real estate agents, but really sucky business owners. What is the one thing that only benefits you that we do in our business? Not doesn't benefit your clients. I mean, it kind of does in a way, but it's the one thing that only benefits you and your business. I'll give you a hint. It's the first thing that we don't like to do. As soon as something else comes up, we're going to give this up. Mm. You know what it is, Jennifer. Following up with your leads, calling. Lead generation. Yeah. <laughs> loves lead generation raise your hand if you just love lead generation yeah alexi's <laughs> thumb down okay nobody loves lead generation right and even tina like you know guys know tina call she's like i don't like cold calling i hate it but it made me millions of dollars so we get into real estate for freedom but there still has to be we all have parts of our jobs that we don't love but here's the key there's like hundreds of ways to lead generate. You got to find the two or three that you love so much that you're happy to do at the scale that you need to do it. Because it's not just what you do. It's how much of it do you do and for how long. So if you just hate cold calls and will never make cold calls, don't try to make cold calls. Why are you pushing yourself to be miserable? Find your thing that you love that you're going to do it more than anybody else. Is that webinars, seminars, open houses, networking, door knocking, um, you know, social media, video, like whatever it is for you, there's like 130 plus ways to lead generate. Just pick the two or three things, but keep in mind, because now we're looking at time and money. What is what we call the forecast, the pipeline of that type of lead? If every lead that you're working with has a long lead conversion time, like it probably won't convert for a year and that's all you're spending time on, what's that going to do for your next month? You know what I mean? <laughs> what not. would you recommend as a um, short term? Like for me, I know realtor.com is my short, my short turnaround. Like sure. um, I have to pay mm -hmm. a referral fee, but it's really quick and I get a lot of them. So for newer agents, what would you say would be a, a more of a short conversion yeah. for leads paid leads generally are so there's two ways you're going to get leads you're going to either pay for them or you're going to do elbow grease mm -hmm. that's everything in life you're either going to pay for it or work for it and if you don't pay for it or work for it you're not going to appreciate it okay so most who are new agents can't afford realtor.com right they can't afford zillow leads they can't they could probably afford facebook leads but because they're cheap they take more work again you're either going to pay for it or you're going to work for it, right? So there's only two types of people in the world. There's people you know and people you don't know. That's it. There's sphere and strangers. That's it. So the number one most important thing you have to do as a new agent is talk to your family and friends. Like, don't you love your family and friends? Like, don't they love you? But understand where the big, like, ooh, like heartache that comes from most agents. They're like, I don't want to be salesy. Don't talk to them about real estate. Just ask them how they're doing. How is it going? I haven't seen you since COVID. 
what's going on? Don't be weird. No, like heavy breathing on the phone. Oh, you want to buy yourself real estate? That's not what we're saying. Okay. Just get in front of more people because there's three ways to make money in real estate. More money, higher price points. Talk to more people. Get better at talking to people. That's it. And if you combine all three of those together and you do it on a schedule and you say the same thing every time, and as soon as the lead comes in, you do the same thing every time, it's one plus one equals two. Where along this conversion line am I messing up? And if you make these small incremental changes along these different pieces, that's how you're going to, but there's a saying that says little hinges swing big doors. If you increase your conversion ratio along these pieces, which is finding leads, getting in touch with leads, that's follow-up, right? There's as many leads, especially paid leads, they're not going to answer right away. You got to follow up with them. Fortune is in the follow-up. 70% of your business will come from follow-up. If you're not following up, you're missing, you are be making three times more money. You are missing. If you did 10 transactions, you could do 30 with the same number of leads that you have right now. They say it takes seven touches on average and most agents quit after the second. Yes, right? And it's boring and it's rejection and it uh, doesn't feel good. So get somebody to sit with you and do it together and complain to each other. Oh God, I didn't want to talk to you anyways. Screw you. <laughs> you know I mean? And then get back on the phone. No, you go. No, you go. Like you do, You. this is a system. This is a system that you're putting in together, putting together to support yourself in things you're not good at. So there's no problem in admitting that you're not the best at things because nobody can be good at everything. It's not possible. You're not supposed to perfectionists. So please stop. You're not supposed to be good at everything. It's okay. Just admit it. But that's so the opposite of what we're taught in corporate world, in nine to five world, in the school system, right? But entrepreneurship is a different thing. It's not real estate that's the problem. We all love opening doors. That's not the problem. It's running the business. It's the personal development. It's the systems, the processes, the time management. That's the stuff that makes us rich. Okay. So I'm so totally going off topic here, but let me get back on topic. Yeah. When I want to go. So, um, so why are systems and processes important? They are the key to scaling, which we've kind of touched on here. It's the only way to get your freedom back. Now, when you get your freedom back, I don't care what you do with your time. Go get a massage. I don't care. Right. Or use that time to get more business, but it's not my business. What you do with your extra time. I'm just telling you how to get extra time. I am telling you, if you spend two hours a day on lead generation and one hour a day on follow-up, whatever that looks like for you, you will be ahead of 95% of other realtors. I'm asking you for 15 hours a week on your business. Have you guys ever heard of the 80-20 rule before? It, it applies to everything in life, right? It's a Pareto principle. If we actually looked at your calendar and broke it down, and my first assignment I give people is a 15-minute increment calendar, and I make them fill it out in their entire life in 15-minute increments every day for two weeks. And it has two columns. What did I plan to do? What did I actually do? And what is that telling you? Number one was called your velocity. What? How much work can you get done in 15 minutes? which you will surprise yourself. And then how close am I to keeping my calendar? And for my overachievers, it actually gives you like, wow, I actually did a lot of stuff. Half the time I'm talking to my overachievers, like, I didn't do anything this week. I'm like, didn't you get like three under contract? What are you talking about? Like, <laughs> you never give ourselves credit as overachievers, which is why processes are hard for us. And when you're ascending into leadership, and you have people following you, maybe you're mentoring them, or people want you to teach them, or you're a team leader. People are like, how do you do this? And you're like, I don't know, just do it. I don't understand. Why can't you just do it? Because they're not you. You don't even know what you're doing. You know what you're doing, but you can't articulate it because you just, you see something that needs to be done and you just do it. 
But when you're starting to train other people how to do it, especially if you're bringing on assistant or a transaction coordinator or whatever, then there's more hands in the pot. Then who does what, when? How does the communication work? That's a system. And it's the same every time. And everyone agrees to it and everybody follows it. It's a checklist. You want Chick-fil-A level precision, guys. Right? Chick-fil-A is a good example. It's smooth. It's seamless. It's the experience is the same pretty much every time. And this is how you get to have the business that you want. And your clients get to have the experience that you want them to have. And that's up to you. So that's the cool thing about our business. You're a business owner. So you get to decide what experience does your client want, to, want them to have? Who are you as a person? What's your mission and vision and values? And how does that translate in the way that you do business? Just write it down, right? And it seems a little bit, that's easy. I can just write it down. You usually got to work with somebody to like kind of bring that out of you, right? So Jennifer and I probably have very similar things, but there's things that she does that I don't do, right? And that's okay because we get to learn from each other. And I'm like, this thing, I'm like, oh, that's cool. I want to do that, right? But this is where you get, this is where you get to do automations and templates, right? And make things, technology, make things faster and bigger and copy and paste and copy and paste and copy and paste. Because copy and paste is key to scaling. As I said, I'm lazy. If I got to do it twice, I'm making a video. Do you know what I mean? I'll, I'll use like um, otter.ai to transcribe my video. That becomes my template. You know what I mean? Like, so it, it's a little bit of thinking. It's a different way of thinking, but you, you get it. You get it if you really sat down and did it. I know a lot of our drivers, our high D personalities are like, oh my God, stab me in the eye with a fork talking about systems. Like, I don't want to think about it. I just want it to be done. Right? Anybody feel like, oh, this is exhausting me right now. Does anybody feel exhausted? Is Questa still here? I know she hates this stuff. But she's here because she she knows it's the key to, to business, right? But um, so the major systems in real estate, they all fun, fall under what we call the C-suite. And if has anybody worked in corporate before they came into real estate? Nope. No. And most team leaders have not, just so you know. Most of the very successful people that you see, this is all they've ever done. Which, again, usually in our business, just so you guys are aware of the trajectory, you start as a solo agent and or you may be on a team and then you, you sell real estate. And then if you're halfway decent at your job and people like you, you start being really successful. And usually it's work ethic and likability and just a relationship driven person. That's not really duplicatable, right? Like I can't give you my personality. I could teach you how to do social media, but that doesn't mean that you want to do social media. You may not have the personality for social media. That's okay. Right? That's okay. We don't have to. But when you then start going into leadership, you got to know what you're doing and how you're doing it. And that's really hard if you've never seen how a corporation is structured versus a solopreneur. So I will go through the C-suite with you guys. You guys, hopefully you've heard of these, um, these terms. And everybody loves to call themselves the CEO, okay? That's the first, that's the first part, the CEO, okay? CEO is chief executive officer. That's the boss. That's the boss, babe, <laughs> right? You're in charge, the mission, the vision, the thinking, the planning. How do I want my life to be, right? Yes, yeah, CEO. Everybody, CEO, oh, 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 yes. And I have that shirt with glitter on it, okay? The CEO, oh, 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 <laughs> with the millions, right? <laughs> and CEO, you've heard these, like the female entrepreneurs. You know. So this is like, you are the CEO of your life, of your business. Even if you're on a team, you're still a CEO because it's still your business. You're still an independent contractor. This is the dreaming, the thinking, the planning. A lot of people get stuck in this role because they have really good ideas. But the reality is you should only be spending about 10% of your time here, but you should be spending 10% of your time here. So it's like either one or the other, we're not doing enough or we're doing too much. This is where personal development comes in, professional development, making time for systems and processes, reevaluating, tracking, making business decisions long-term. This is the long-term future planner. 
Now, everything comes from this. Everything falls from this. This has to be strong. You have to know who you are and what you want your life and your business to look like. And then everything else comes to support that vision. The next role in the C-suite is called the chief operations officer. So this is the person who takes the dreams and the visions and makes it a reality. It's operations, it's systems, it's strategic, it's planning, it's tracking, right? And that COO then brings those results to the CEO, which is still you, okay? You gotta have a business meeting with yourself. <laughs> You're like, if you see me talking to myself, it's okay, I'm having a business meeting, I'm having a staff meeting, right? <laughs> And then you get to make this, is this, are we going in the right direction? Is this what we want it to be? Should we change it? Am I noticing a glitch in the matrix? Am I noticing I always forget to tell people about utilities? Like, what is it that always goes wrong? And things that are going right, can we make them better? That's still in the CEO role, right? Okay, but the COO is the one a little bit on the ground, right? Then you have the CMO, your chief marketing officer. This is the person, the role in charge of your voice, your messaging, right? Your branding, your marketing, your lead generation, your sales, your conversions. Now, we're at a very high level of systems here, right? Each of those individual things I just mentioned all have their own processes and systems. But thinking at a very high level, so if you're thinking of corporate like SaaS or Google, these are the guys with tippity top, 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 top. Then they have VPs. So if you have your CMO, then you have your VP of sales, VP of branding, VP of marketing, right? Those are individual roles underneath and they have their own things, but then they have to communicate with each other, check in with each other on a regular basis, which means you need to put that on your calendar. How to check in on a regular basis. How to assess your systems. Leadership is plan, lead, order, control. A lot of us are good at planning and leading, not good at ordering or organizing, and definitely not good at controlling. We hate controlling. We hate accountability, which is why people who have coaches perform better, period. We all need accountability, whether that's peer-to-peer -peer accountability, peer-to-leadership -leadership accountability. It should be both, really, right? All of this stuff is necessary to be successful, right? Right. And as a team leader, or if you're going to be a team leader or a leader, a mentor, your job is to give accountability to people. And in reality, accountability is the highest form of love. If I love you and I want you to be successful, I have to keep you accountable to the goals that you have set for yourself. If I just let it skate by, I'm, I'm not doing you a favor. I'm not helping you to not keep you accountable, right? So that's a coach or a mentor or a team leader. That's the person who holds those standards that you have set and then helps you maybe break down what are, how do you get to that thing that you want? Let's put it on your calendar and let's come up with a system of or like what activities should we do in what time frame? And let's check in and see how that goes. How's it been going? Why weren't you able to do it? Is that a permanent thing? Is it something that was temporary? Do we need to work around it? What are high level activities, high energy? What are low energy activities? How can we be productive when we're low energy? Because there's times that you're not gonna feel like it. Cool, how can we keep the needle moving forward? Even if it's doing a spreadsheet or doing a research or watching a video, right? How can we manage our time, emotions, feelings and still keep things going in the right direction? Right, okay, so, <clears throat> so then you have the CFO, which is the chief financial officer. I find most real estate agents really stuck with this one. We don't want to look at our money. Hey, what you focus on grows, guys. You have to look at your money. You have to have a plan for money. It has to be real. A lot of us, me, I'm going to point to myself, grew up with a really bad relationship with money. And a lot of it also had a bad relationship with my feelings of worth. Do I deserve to be successful? So I would sabotage myself because success felt wobbly. I know how to survive. Back against the wall, I'll clean a toilet, drive an Uber. I know how to do that. But what about when I'm making six or seven figures? What do I what do I do with that? Oh my God, do I deserve that? Right, There's a, this is the personal development stuff, right? So you gotta look at your relationship to money. 
and get your books in order and do your time, all the stuff you're supposed to do. And if you're not good at this, hire somebody to help you, right? Again, all of these things, you don't, you're not meant to be good at all of this stuff, guys. In a big corporation, these are different people, different career paths, different college degrees, different personalities, because they're just, you're not meant to be good at all of this stuff. But you're like required to as a solo agent. And this is why you feel overwhelmed and confused and lost. Then you got to be a real estate agent. What's all your systems of working with a buyer, systems of working with a seller? Is that copy and paste? Could I hand it off to somebody now? Can I do a trigger on like a mini chat or something like that? Can I do a trigger in my follow-up campaigns? That's like, as soon as someone says this, or at this point, or X number of days after we've met, this happens. And it takes time. If you guys, uh, and I don't know if I'm preaching to the choir, some of you guys are too young for this, but you guys remember the choose your own adventure books? If you want to do this, if you want to go down this path, you go here and then go to page 10. That's systems. They have, they have videos now. <laughs> they do. I love that stuff. But see, that's, that kind of thinking is, that's why it takes time to come up with systems with different leads. If they're internet leads, what do I say to them? When, how often do I follow up with them? Well, kind of depends. What kind of internet leads? What's their timeline? What do they say? What if they texted you, but they didn't call? What if they emailed? Like, what if they're opening things? Like, you have to think through all of these pieces, which is why it starts to feel overwhelming. But once you've thought through them once, right, then you track and see how effective this is. What's my return on investment of my time and my money? Should we continue on this path or do something else? Right. It's a lot. So I'm, I'm giving you credit to feel overwhelmed. Like, it's a lot to think of these things, right? So, in, and again, I have a, a handout that I'm going to send to Jennifer to send out to everybody um, that shows the, the C-suite um, and then kind of the VP positions, because that can give you an idea of some of the different systems that you want to think through. Um, but I know that this feels overwhelming and putting together systems feels like pulling the arrow back. You feel like you're going backwards. Like, oh, I'm not making any money right now. I'm just working in this stupid system. This is the best income generating activity that you can do. It's your lever. It's your small hinge to open big doors. You can double your income. Guys, think about our income. Let's say your average price point and your average commission is $10,000. If you just got, you talk to 100 people and normally you can get one closing, what if you get two? Because It's exponential, right? What if you get three? What if you increase your closing ratio? But it's the same number of people, but you just make more money mm -hmm. because you got better at it and you did less work and it was faster because it was automated or you were able to hand it off to somebody else. So if you made $30,000 a month, could you hire an assistant? Right. And, and I know that that's unfathomable. A lot of times for people who are like, oh, 30000 Oh, my God. I don't know. If that feels wobbly to you, you got to work on your relationship with money and your relationship to your worth. I'm going to tell you a lot of times in our generation, especially like we were told that our value is in our relationships, the hats that we wear, who we are to other people, mom, wife, daughter, right? Caretaker. Do you feel that you have value just to exist? Can you just be valuable without having to do anything? That's a really hard thing. Do you feel like you have to earn your value? Right? That's a shift. It's a shift you got to get out of. I know I'm giving you some therapy lessons this morning. Okay. But let me tell you. Okay. So again, this is the key to scaling. Um, take your systems and your processes. Once you find a system, which we kind of walk through, let's talk about one particular system. We've talked about a few, but let's break down um, the buyer's presentation system. Like just really quickly, just so I can break that down for you. Okay. I'll tell you what my system is. And I'm not looking at it right now, but it's it's pretty much the same system all the time. So I have the same thing that I say to people when they, I talk to them in the first place. My goal is to always get into an appointment. Always. I, you don't sell on the phone. You ask a few questions because really sales is asking questions, not talking. You get a little bit of information. Don't give the milk away for free. <laughs> and then you're going to say, I would love to talk to you about how everything works from A to Z. Purchasing a home in North Carolina. And especially in this market. Because guess what? That works all the time. That's why it's a system. Especially in this market, will always work no matter what market it is. Do you understand how that's a system? It's copy and paste. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to remember it. I don't have to stress about it. 
My anxiety is gone. I don't have to think about it. What's a good time? This time or this time? So then I make it, I schedule an appointment using my calendar and I send an email invite. I send a follow up email. So great talking to you, blah, blah, blah. I have a template that I use. All of this takes me like three seconds because I have a template. Right? Day before confirmation, text message, phone call. Day of confirmation, I'm going to get there early and get them their drink. Right? Then you meet with them, chit chat, you get right into your buyer's presentation. I have a PowerPoint. Some of you guys have seen it. It's the same. It's always been the same. It'll always be the same. But like this presentation is the same, but that gives me freedom to like improv a little bit based on me looking at their face and how, like what's important to them. Because right away in my buyer's presentation, after like two slides of talking about me, I'm like, I don't want to talk about me. I want to talk about you. And I have a whole list of questions. So my process is to let them talk. <laughs> I don't have to have a process where I do everything, right? I got to get to the point where they're leading. They feel like they're leading. They feel like they're being heard. And then based on that, I continue the presentation, but I hit on the points by, because I actually listened to what they said. I said, remember you talked about this. So like, they're like, oh man, she's listening to me. She knows she's talking about. And then at the very end of the slide, and this is what the next steps are. Here's the next steps from here. And I have a whole slide that says, here's the next steps from here. <laughs> it's, it's on the slide. Like I, I can't mess it up. It's right there. I can just read it. But I've already talked about financing. I've already talked about principal interest tax insurance, HOA. I've talked about the difference between mine and Johnson County versus Wake County versus Harnett County, right? I've talked about difference in, in their purchasing power based on how much HOA is, right? I've talked about these things. I've talked about how we show houses. I've talked about when you're looking at houses that you're interested. I've talked about calf, catfishing. So these, you know, these listing agents be out here catfishing you all the time. Do you know what I mean? Like just because you see it looks beautiful in Zillow does not mean it's beautiful. I talk about fair housing. I talk about how I can't, I can't comment on neighborhoods. The standard that I want to live is not the same standard that you want to live. And I cannot say that for you. So here's what we do. You go drive the neighborhood first. I don't just jump at beck and call. You call me when I see how, no, that's not how it works. And I'm not going to send you all disclosures before we go to the showing. You may not even like it. Right? We're going to narrow it down, narrow it until when I, we see houses, we see five houses before we make an offer because I've set this groundwork from the buyer's presentation. If you have buyers running you all around, you're not doing a buyer's presentation the right way. And you're talking about experiences that you've had. I can point to transactions and say, we saved this person $10,000. They would have lost $10,000, $15,000, $20,000 from this if we hadn't made that, if they hadn't listened to us. So, especially you guys now are nervous about this whole upcoming NAR thing. Like, this is what you have to do. You need to know. If your whole value proposition is that you don't have to pay me, the seller does, you'll be out of this industry. But if you know your value because you've done transactions or you listen to somebody who's done a lot of transactions, you can say, at this point, we did that. At this point, we did this. Here's what I'm going to save you. Here's where this can go wrong. That's what you're showing people. And they're like, oh, God, especially first time members, like, please save me. I've had people tell me, okay, so how much do we owe you? How much do we have to pay you? Would that... No, I'm like, oh, no, no, no. Like previously, I'm like, well, the seller, you know, whatever. So I say, here's the next steps from here. I'm going to send you a follow-up email. I'm going to send you a couple emails. One, a follow-up email, one introduction to the lender. And one is going to be uh, from my system where I'm going to send you what's called working with real estate agents, buyer's agency. That's my process. It doesn't change. There is no exemption. In my document, I have all the sample forms. So that when it says, has this person received a sample offer? Yes, they have, because I send it every time. I don't have to think about it. They've already, they've already gotten it because it's in my link. Right? I'm preventing myself from having to think about it in the future by saying, my process is to send this link. The things that you need are in the link. It's the same every single time. But I'm telling you, here's what to expect. Because where people get mm, nervous is when things happen that they don't expect. So you have to set expectations, but you got to know what the expectations are. And by you have to come up, you have to know this, right? And if you don't know, you better get with a team leader, manager, coach, somebody to help you with this, this process. So 
here's what we're gonna do. Here's how showings work. What we're not gonna, I'm not gonna put you on the MLS until you're pre-qualified. Period. We're not going anywhere until you're pre-qualified. Because I'm able to talk about due diligence. Like we're not, no. Do you want to lose $10,000? That's not how it works. Is it in when we see a house? We're not going to just go make an offer. We're going to go home and we're going to do research and I'm going to pull disclosures. And I'm going to explain all this stuff to you and we're going to pull comps. Like, but then I actually do that. So I'm setting expectations and boundaries and standards in the beginning. And I don't have these questions. I don't have people with back and forth with me. No, because I've already told you. Or do you remember when we talked about this? I talked about the whole under contract process, but once we're under contract, we have the conversation again, because I don't think you remembered it. I don't assume that you remembered it, but I have talked about it before, right? And I have a whole document you can read if you really are bored and have insomnia and you really want to just do it, right? But what's my process is with my processes. So what's my process of creating that Google link that I show? What's my process of doing my PowerPoint or my PDF? What's my process of sending the the emails what's my process of who does my working with real estate and buyers agency how do i explain working with real estate agents and buyers agency i'll tell you right now i've always said and this is north carolina specific so this you know north carolina people should be a little bit more comfortable to say this part right here in the buyers agency it says my commission is whatever it is 99.999 percent of the time the sellers pay sometimes they don't if they don't pay you have to pay i tell like whatever just say it because i'd rather you say that now i'm like no, 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 no. okay bye I'm not going to convince you. I don't have to because I have leads coming in. All of this stuff is a lead generation problem. If you're like leaning over the table with commission breath, so desperate to get that, you have to make this work or you're going to lose your house. You have to be the lighthouse, right? This is how I do things. This is my process. I'm a professional person. This is how my time works. And then constantly evaluate your dollar per hour. The activity that you're doing, the 80-20 rule, 80% 80 of your time should be income generating. Right now, it's probably less than 20%. We got to flip that on its head. You need to give away everything that's not making you money that you don't have to do. Except for potentially showing houses. But even then, you could give that away. Showing houses doesn't make you money, guys. Showing houses services the business that you have. What makes you money? Marketing, branding, lead generation, personal development, professional development. That's it. That's what makes you money. Have you ever heard the phrase of I want to chop down an axe and I have six hours. I'm going to spend four hours sharpening the axe. This stuff is sharpening the axe so that you can little hinges that swing big doors. You can be effective. You can copy and paste and then you can hand it off. Or you can automate, delegate. That's the key to a system. So I want to just really quickly, I know we're kind of a, we're close to our time. Um, <clears throat> here is the process to create what we call a standard operating procedure, which is a process. SOPs. Have you guys heard that term SOPs before? That's a standard operating procedure. Before, I'm, I'm going to tell you this story and we, we did this in like fourth grade and I've, I will never forget this. I had a teacher in my English class and she said, we're going to do an exercise and I want you to write instructions and how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and be as detailed and specific as you can, because I'm not going to do anything else except what you write. Can you imagine how this went? I will never forget that exercise. So it's like spread the spread the peanut butter on the bread. With what? So she stuck her hand in, spread it on the bread because I didn't tell her to use a knife. Get the bread out. How? You didn't open the bread bag. I can't do it. So you've got to get it down to the level of spreading the peanut butter by hand. And this is where we struggle because we just, everybody knows that. They don't know that. You cannot think that other people know that, especially if you're bringing people in. Mm -hmm. You have to be as specific. Get a link. If you're like, hey, this is a this is a tool that we use and here's a link to that tool and here's a link to all those trainings. It should all be on one document and everything should be linked to that one document or spreadsheet or however you're going to do it. And uh, incremental or uh, in order, time order, right? This has, A has to happen before B. 
If A and B can happen at the same time, write that. Because then you can give it to two different people maybe, right? Or you can do A way before, so you're prepared for B, right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So then you're going to, um, before you get into a whole spreadsheet and whatever, sit with a piece of paper and just write. We call it a brain dump. Think of, by, by Lexi, you have to think of all of the possible things that you have to do for this. What comes to your mind? Take a break, go back, write some more. Go back, write some more. Do it with a partner. Do it with a fellow real estate agent, right? Do it with a coach, whatever. Then start to organize it. Which comes first? Are these things linked together? Do I have to do this before I do this? Put it on, I love to put it on a spreadsheet because I also have a column that says, how long will this step take? Because how many times are we like thinking about it? But the reality only takes us a minute. Mm -hmm. If I knew that this will only take me a minute, am I much more likely to just go do it? Instead of like, oh, I'm gonna do this thing. Okay, but it's gonna take you a minute. But it's the it's the lead up of all these things. But then eventually, once you get really good at this, you're gonna say, how many things can I like get rid of or combine or delegate or automate? But until it's written, you can't do that. And you're gonna run through that system a couple times, run through it with somebody who's not in real estate and see how they feel about it. And you're going to find the cracks. And every time you create an implement a system, just know there's going to be cracks in the system. It's not going to be perfect. It's okay. That's what we're doing. We're just getting better at it, right? And then put any tools that you need, any resources, any scripts. So it's literally all in one place. So it's like the day, the way I do it is like on the left-hand side is the day of the transaction. The day that we're under contract is day zero, for example. So on day zero what we call DOA, date of acceptance. These things need to happen. Plus one means the next day after date of acceptance, right? So I'm putting it like in sequential order and which things they need to happen on which day. Cause you know what I'm able to do from there? Once we're in a contract, schedule it out. It's fully scheduled. Does that make sense? Even to the point of writing down, make, make calendar invitations. That's a step. Because you think you're going to remember. You're not going to remember. Just write it down, right? Um, so, and then it has, what day do I do it? What is the process? A description of the process. Any tools? Notes? Any tools and resources and that type of thing in a separate spreadsheet? How long it's going to take? And you can change those columns if it makes more sense for you. Like what order to put it in. Make that whole document. Then you could do something like a Trello or a sauna or Monday.com or whatever, or you can put it into your um, CRM and do your templates and that kind of thing. And because you're going to start to recognize, oh, here's how I can make this easier. And you're going to put that on your to-do list, right? And then you're going to update that spreadsheet of, of your process. And then you get to train, delegate, automate, um, always be thinking of a dollar per hour. If you want to make $500 per hour, you should not be doing things that people who make $15 an hour should do, should do. Is this a good use of your time? Is this in your 80, 20 rule? Now the thinking and creating the processes is a great use of your time. Once that's done, doing the thing is not a good use of your time. Especially when I talk about transaction coordination to people, like, well, I'm doing my own I just love that part of it. I'm like, mm, it's not a big deal. I'm just sending an email. Mm. Yeah, but it's a it's death by paper cuts. You're stuck to a computer. The stress of remembering to do it, right? All of that counts. Your mental load, and this is one thing as women, especially we don't count, is our time and our hours. We're going to start looking at our hours. When, you, when people do that 15 minute increment, we go back and we highlight different colors, which was income generating, which was servicing the business, which was personal for you, which was obligations to your family. Do you have to do this or can someone else do it? And we're so stuck and this is how it has always been. I have to do it this way. It's not true. Right? We got to shift our thinking on that. We got to become business owners. We got to stop allowing the one thing that benefits us, which is lean generation. Stop giving it up as soon as somebody else asks us to do something. 
There is no emergency in real estate. No one has ever died from a real estate transaction. <laughs> it's fine to wait for two hours to get a response. It's fine to set a system. I'm not available. I'm in a meeting, but I'm in a meeting with myself. I'm in a meeting with my wealth. I'm in a meeting with my business. I'm in a meeting with my future. You don't need to know that, but I'm not available. I'm not, av I'm not available. So sorry. I'll get back to you and I will do what I say I'm going to do. Give yourself time to get back to people. Don't I'll get back to you right away. Oh, no, you're not. You'll get back to them within an X amount of time, a reasonable amount of time that accounts for emergencies in real estate, right? Protect your time in the morning. That's your lead generation and follow-up time. Because most people who you're working with, your clients are working a nine to five job, right? They need you nights and weekends. But when we don't have something on our calendar and you just have this blank space, it's like, Ugh. that's how we feel. Like, Ugh. But make an appointment with yourself, have accountability, get on Zoom with a partner, whatever. Accountability is the key to success on top of systems, right? Okay. Um, yeah. But again, at the end of the day, the time management is like, what are the things I need to do for my system? Am I doing it? Is somebody else doing it? When does it have to be done? My closing is this day. The date of acceptance is here. Then day zero, day one, day two. Which parts do I have to do? Which part can my TC do, right? I don't have to think if I have good systems set up. What should I be doing every day? It just comes up on my calendar. How much mental load would that take off you? Oh my God, I feel like I'm missing deadlines all the time and everything's everywhere, right? This is, ah, oh, is it really? Or you just don't want to do lead generation, right? It should take you less than 40 hours from beginning to end to do a transaction. Total, including lead generation. Listings probably even less. Charity, this has been so incredible. So I'm going to let everyone do a Q&A real quick, but yeah. I'm going to share again um, Charity's information because there's different ways to contact her and you do coaching as well, don't you? I do. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I coach um, team leader or team leaders, people starting teams and I, and I coach solo agents. Perfect. I just put that in the chat. If everyone wants to at least copy that down, um, that way, after this, if you want to think about coaching or want to get on Charity's calendar, um, you know, just to kind of sharpen your business skills, um, I think that'd be a really great way to do well, it. I'll offer everybody a 30 minute free just business oh, call. That's great. Business that's strategy great. call. I can probably solve your problems in 30 minutes or at least give you a solution. Most people I can like, OK, I know what you're doing. So if nothing else, that can help you get some clarity around what do I need to do first, which is usually like you guys are like, I will do the work. Just <laughs> tell me what to do. Right? It's like, how do I do it? When do I do it? But yeah, so anybody on this call or if it's on Zoom, you guys feel free to just jump on my calendar. 30 minutes. We'll, we'll see what we can solve in 30 minutes, if nothing else. That's great. Does anyone have any questions before we um, wrap up this work at Wednesday week? Everyone's yeah, overwhelmed. Pretty active in the ch in the chat. I love it. Um, oh, Miguel, you're so cool. Um, any anything on you guys again? Just jump on my calendar. The Calendly is in there, and I'm happy to just sit with you for 30 minutes. Maybe even be maybe even be less time. Might be able to solve it faster. But uh, I'm happy to help. This is my favorite thing to do. I literally love it. Like if I could just do this every single time, <laughs> just solve people's problems, and then you guys go to the work. I don't want to do it. <laughs> But also problems. That's great. <laughs> when will this Zoom be repeated? It's going to be in um, on my YouTube channel. It's also live on Facebook, but um, it should be up in the next thirty minutes. Yeah, everyone's thanking you. This this was really incredible, and I can definitely see how this topic could go on for hours, forever, and hours, and hours forever, because it's all related to each other, right? It's so much. Yeah. But yes. yes, but I, I think that this was really insightful and I think I will be scheduling a time on your calendar. Because yeah, 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 yeah. I, I mean, I think it's really good to have someone other than yourself kind right. of reflect and listen yeah. Yeah. so they, they can guide you better. They're impartial. We get in our own heads. So yeah, this so was, really talking, this is how it has to be. Yeah, we grow, we grow as people, we grow as businesses. And so sometimes how it used to be is not how it has to be now. And just having that separate perspective just gets us out of our, like, 
oh, that's a breath of fresh. You're giving me permission. Like, yay. So I, I do that a lot. I give people permission. I'm like, no, you don't have to do that. Yeah. <laughs> That's really incredible. Well, thank you so much. Honestly, this is even better than I expected it to be. This will be recorded in YouTube for everyone to watch after. Charity, thank you for giving us that document on um, the C-suite. So as soon as I get that, I'll share it with everybody. And um, yeah, I guess we'll go on and everyone have a great day. Hopefully I'll get this offer accepted and we're going to keep on grinding. Thank you. Bye, guys. Have a great day. Bye.